What's going on, Bulls Nation? Welcome in to the CHO Bulls Podcast, hey, presented Jay. by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook. Download their app. Be sure to use promo code CHGO when you sign up. I'm Peck. You can follow me on Twitter at Bulls underscore Peck. My guys, in studio with me, Big Dave, bow, bow. B-A-W-L Sports, Will the Go Gottlieb, Will underscore Gottlieb. And on the producer's control today, it's our friend Loris. Hey, Lo! What is up? How you How doing, doing, buddy? Oh, should I'm. We turn the lights on? Oh, we oh on. yeah, the light should be on. See, I am stressed <laughs> I out. Looked at the screen. I was like, yeah, why well, I look do different? It. Damn let's it, Dave. <laughs> I was like, why well, I look I don't different. like those bright lights. Well, well, oh, it's going to be so bright. You got to get used to it because everybody wants I did to see like you. That's not off, true. But I couldn't tell you what it was. It was something. As soon as I looked at the screen, I was like, wait a minute. There it is. That one I don't mind as much. This one over here. Freaking uh, kill. Oh, yeah. Ah. Yeah. Well, if you think that's bad enough. Melty! Ah, now we are here. There it is. Look at that. Handsome the, guys. To the, the problem left is. The right. It's too damn bright. I yes. know. And now Whoa. we, we uh, already. Get your shady rays on, dude. You know I'm saying. Uh, Don't uh, you they're over at my desk. Ah, see. Uh, see, now I have to wait until we do an ad read for them, and then I'll go grab them. Baby Joey will be upset with you right uh, now. Ah, well, he can deal. Never understood. <laughs> <laughs> we coming after kids now? <laughs> we coming after I'm children? Just saying. By the way, I I love you guys, but guess what? I'm gonna let Steven do the show. Hey, That's okay. Steven's here. So, That's okay. You know, hi and also bye. Okay. I like All how right. I had to make an announcement about it. You could have just got up, you know, walked away. And you guys you gotta do the intro. Steven over again. was late All right. because he was attending to very important matters. Of course. And so Lawrence, kind soul that he is. Mm. Uh, volunteered to help out and get some of the pre-production stuff ready to go for today's show. Mm -hmm. And now Steven has arrived, and there was a quick little uh, pass of the producer's baton for the rest of the show. Mm. Hey, Steven, how are you? Oh, I'm good. You feeling Doing good? All right? all right? Yes, sir. All right, man. We check in, sir. As a Philippine man at 6 <laughs> Another one of best. our producers, Sarah's hanging out in the comments saying, that looks better. Yes. Tyson, I, what is, I'm reading this question Tyson has. me As a fellow big man at 6'7", damn. Oh. Uh, Best airline I, to I fly got an for I, I got What's an answer for you, Tyson. For I got an answer. The Bulls have no one who is six seven, so you can travel for the team, fly <laughs> private with them. That's the best airline. All they, right. need, they need a power forward. Their team plane does look like it's pretty cozy. They need plenty a power of, forward. Plenty Tyson. of leg room. Yeah, wait, how tall is Justin Lewis? Uh, six, probably, six? probably around six six, six Dang. seven. Okay. Well, yeah, he's right. You can try out, man. The best airline, though. I love how in you are on Justin Lewis, by the way. Oh, yeah, I know. I tell you, we, we were there together. We saw him grow so together, I'm sir. Ready. I'm ready. I am for ready. The he's Justin going Lewis to be experience. a player. Fully in. I just fully believe he's going to be a player. We'll get into that later. Let me answer this quickly. United, American, and yes, that's it. <laughs> United American has awesome leg space. Awesome leg space. Uh, and when I sat in the economy yeah. of United, the mm -hmm. leg space was nice. Really? It was nice. It was solid. So, but 6'7", I, of course, you should yeah. definitely get economy plus. You know what I mean? Doing it that way. But United and American have really good leg room. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. uh, Air France first class. Yes. Also, also, leg room was not bad. Any first class you <laughs> want to take. It's the most legroom I've ever yes. had in my life. <laughs> Wee! On any mode of transportation. Man. Me and these chairs are really Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now we know how Will feels when we sit in the first class seats. Uh, hope you all out there in Bulls Nation are having a great day. Hump day, halfway through the week. Um, wanted to talk a little bit about some free agent targets today. Uh, we know that the Bulls are strapped for cash, but there are maybe still some names out there that are reasonable, possible. Mm. There's also the possibility that Bulls find some other ways to open up some cash space. Maybe they do something with Lonzo if it's the disabled player exception. Mm -hmm. And our good friend Ricky O'Donnell of SB Nation, shout out to Ricky, 
just dropped on SB Nation his top 75 free agent to be list for the 2023 free agent class. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously the first half of this list basically is players the Bulls ain't getting. <laughs> However, there are some interesting names on the bottom half of this top 75 list worth exploring. So we're going to talk about that today. But in order to talk about that, we figured we would first talk a little bit more about, I know, Big Dave, you call it the real mustardy shit, but the mm -hmm. Bulls cap situation as we enter free agency. Mustardy? I've, you know, I've like that's the, the scene this. from Wolf of Wall Street. You quote it all the time. Real mustardy shit when you're talking about the numbers. I, honestly, I don't even recall saying I've it. I've never heard that. <laughs> I don't recall saying this one time. But I'm often. But I'm that, with you. I'm you know the Matthew McConaughey scene in Wolf of Wall Street? Yeah, the, I say woozy and a wazzy. I, I don't think I've ever said okay. mustardy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I've done that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm there, yeah. But I don't, I don't even put you out there. I just don't remember saying that, bro. That's all. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we felt like uh, going over some of the Bulls cap details would be the the jumping off point to talk about some of these fringe bargain hunting free agents, specifically of the three point shooting variety, because okay. we know that that's what this team needs. Correct. So that's what we're going to get to today. Uh, Will, you have been working on your own version of the Bulls cap sheet for this summer Blanks. and through the next few years. And so basically let's operate under the assumption as you have on your cap sheet, Will, that the Bulls bring back Vooch for 20 million with his bird rights. The Bulls sign Kobe to what? 10 million? 12? Well, let's let's look at it uh Stephen, if we can throw up this cap sheet. This is basically <laughs> I'm sorry, somebody called Throne Hat in the comments. <laughs> you love to see it. Wow. <laughs> well done. All right. This is why you're under the bright lights, All sir. Right. This is why. <laughs> this is why you're under the bright lights. I think that's Joey. That's got to be Joey. <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. I'm sorry, Will. Please continue. No problem at all. So if we look at this cap sheet, and this is not 100% accurate. This is just sort of like back of the napkin math that I was working on this morning right. when we were talking about, you know, space that the Bulls have in order to sign these guys. So yesterday we talked about Vooch at 22, 23 million. Um, I think that's probably on the high end of what he could get, but I think that's just to be conservative with how much space they'll have. Let's call him 22 million. Kobe, 13 million. Again, I think it's probably going to be in the 12 to 14 million range. Let's split the difference, go 13. Okay. And let's go Io at two and a half. I think he probably ends up getting a little bit more than that from the Bulls. Okay. But if you look at those projected salaries with everything else that the Bulls have going on, from Zach Damar down to Lonzo, Caruso, Pat Will, we're assuming here that Derek Jones and Andre Drummond both opt in, which Correct. is what they've said they will do. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the non-guaranteed contracts for Karlik Jones and Marco Simonovic. Before you even fill the rest of their roster – with roster spots 14 and 15, mm -hmm. you are $275,000 below the luxury tax. Mm -hmm. You're over the cap. <sighs> you can't use any cap space to sign guys. Mm -hmm. You don't really have, uh, well, you, you have the $12.2 million mid-level exception mm -hmm. at your disposal, and you have the four and a half, four point four, I think, million dollar um, biannual, biannual right. exception. But using either of those would push you into the luxury tax. We assume that's probably not going to happen. Right. Although... If these are the numbers that you're looking at for these guys, even in order to fill out the roster, you're probably going to have to go up to the tax line, if not into the tax, which I think just sets the stage for the kind of conversation we want to have with regards to who the Bulls could possibly sign mm -hmm. to be a difference maker. This does not even include bringing back Javante Green or Patrick Beverly. Um, I think we can all agree that like at some point you need to cycle in some new bodies there with your, with your last couple of rotation spots. Right. Mm -hmm. But... Not a lot of space to work with, and so you have to keep that in mind when you talk about free agents, and um, ultimately, I think it's going to require trading one of the big three mm -hmm. in order to open up that kind of space. Always happens. Yeah, so, I mean, this uh, back of the napkin math you've done for the Bulls' uh, cap situation this summer, so Carleek and Marco, I, have, I see you have included there, non-guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so and the Bulls then, can waive those guys, I think, um, before the end of June. Right. Okay. Um, is it around the same time that uh, DD, DJJ can opt in, like the 24th? Um, I think it's a little bit later than that. Okay. I have it written down somewhere, but I can pull it up. 
But even if they waive those guys, their money comes completely off the books. They would still need to fill those roster spots, right? Which means you're signing minimum players. That so that's the part that's scary is when you look at it like this, and you even just have no names blank roster spot fourteen blank roster spot fifteen, filling out a a fifteen man roster with basically no money to use, um, which is a daunting thought. The other thing, uh, you know, with Vooch specifically, I know we've talked about him a lot, talking about his contract negotiations resuming, as it was reported, and I know you guys talked about it again on Monday's show. Mm -hmm. That concept that Bulls fans need to be very clear on is if the decision is let Vooch walk, you can then use the mid-level exception to replace Vooch and find yourself a starting center Mm -hmm. somewhere on the free agent market with that Mm mid-level. But... It's not like you're clearing out 20 plus million in salary cap space. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And can you just throw the cap sheet up there again one more time, Stephen? Um, if you were to just let Vooch walk, and I think that's extremely unlikely, um, and so they'll probably either bring him back, as all reports have indicated, or try to work out a sign in trade. But if you do let him walk for nothing, you're still um, $5 million over the cap with all of this. Uh, uh, everything else as we've projected here about the same. Mm -hmm. So you don't have cap space to go sign somebody. You can use the $12 million mid-level exception, which if everything um, goes according to this math, they probably won't use otherwise. So you have the ability to go and sign a replacement. The replacement would almost certainly not be as good or productive a player as Vooch, but you could then clear off the $22 million for the following season and mm-hmm. the season after that, right. which does open up some space longer term. Right. Obviously, you're taking a step back in the immediate future to take a step forward, hopefully down the road. Mm-hmm. Can uh, you break down the color code for me real quick? Yeah, so the, the blue ink is an incomplete roster charge, mm-hmm. and that is, like, I think basically half of a, a veteran's minimum roster slot that you will get taxed by the league, fined by the league, I should say, um, if you don't have your roster slots full. Mm-hmm. Uh, the purple is cap holds. So mm-hmm. that is, that's going to exceed what the actual dollar amount for a guy would be. So if you look at DeRozan, almost $43 million yeah. for next year. Yeah. That's more than what he will get paid, obviously. Mm-hmm. But it's the hold that you have on the guy's salary for the next year. Mm-hmm. The gray is non-guaranteed. For Karlik and Simonovic, those are both fully non-guaranteed contracts. Mm. Um, and I looked up, you can, they can uh, pick up or waive Simonovic anytime before July 7th when it get fully guarantees, and Karlik not until January 10th based on when he signed. Uh, the green is restricted free agency. You'll see that with uh, Dale and Terry down in 25-26. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Kobe is restricted free agent this year, but again, I'm projecting him on that number signed, right. and same with Patrick Williams we're skipping his restricted free agency to put that 20 million that we talked about yesterday in right. there and then the orange background is the projected salary so that's okay. what I'm estimating based on what we've kind of heard and talked about for each of these players okay thank you so what the Bulls are staring at this summer looking at these figures is veteran minimum maybe a piece of the mid-level or a piece of the biannual exception to fill out the last couple spots of this roster while still staying just a few dollars below that luxury tax line. Is that right, Will? Exactly. And these, I would say, are like rough estimates of what these guys could end up making. But let's say Vooch gets 20 or 18 instead of 22. Mm -hmm. That changes things. Let's say Kobe gets 10 instead of 13. That obviously changes things. I think I'm underestimating a little bit on what Io might make. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe it comes out in the wash, but that's why, like, getting team-friendly deals on these guys is really important because it does change what you're able to do with the rest of the roster here this summer. Mm. Wow. (laughs) Whew. Lovely. Uh, Throwing a hat. Said he wants to see Justin Lewis play for the Bulls this year. Yeah, we're Uh, all about Justin Lewis, man. We're on the train. (laughs) We're on the train. All about... Uh, Justin and, Lewis. And again, this is all under the assumption that they sign everyone, that everybody's kind of returning, right? Yeah, so um, the guys who are under contract this year were the 
names that were just written in regular black font. Mm -hmm. Everybody else, we're assuming they bring back. Mm -hmm. And then you have the player option guys, Derek Jones and Drummond. They've said that they will return, so likely they're on the books. And then the non-guaranteed and the remaining roster spots, I think, is where right. those last really five from Io, Karlik, Simonovic, roster spot 14 and 15, mm -hmm. those are, I think, the the places where you can actually start to look at some potential changes. And okay. I, I know we touched on Drummond at the end of yesterday's show, uh, but after yesterday's show, um, an interview with Andre Drummond dropped. It was uh, He was on Brandon Marshall's podcast. Shout, shout out. out, former shout Chicago out. Bears receiver. Mm -hmm. I think it's called like the Paper Route podcast. And, and they covered a lot of ground with Andre. I, I highly recommend going and finding it on YouTube. Uh, watch the interview. They mm -hmm. talk a lot about, uh, you know, Andre... Bull season, mm -hmm. his upcoming plans. They talk. He opened up about you know the mental health break he took mm -hmm. the, uh, towards the end of this past bull season. It was a very interesting conversation, uh, athlete to athlete. So check it out. But when Brandon Marshall asked Drummond in that interview, like, so you're for sure he went back to it after answering the question a while previous in the interview. Are you sure you're gonna ri ride out with Chicago? And Drummond did have like a little hesitation and like, eh, we'll mm -hmm. see. Because they were talking about Drummond's elite rebounding numbers mm -hmm. and uh, how maybe he could get more mm -hmm. on the free agent market this summer than the 3.36 that the Bulls owe him this uh, upcoming season. We'll see. He did say in the interview, I'm happy in Chicago. I want to mm -hmm. follow, you know, follow this through. Mm -hmm. Thought we had a good squad this past season and just mm -hmm. a few things didn't go our way. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I could see Drummond turning – uh, declining that option and hitting the open market. Yeah. It's some way in which the Bulls get a little bit more wiggle room yeah. as far as money they can use towards their MLE or their biannual, assuming that they keep Vooch around. Yeah, I mean, we kind of talked about it yesterday, uh, just how important comfort is uh, to a player. And honestly, I don't think Billy Donovan is a huge fan of uh, Andre Drummond. Uh, what he, you know, does out there on the floor. Some of it I get. He's Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. I completely understand. Um, so the question begs you, would you stay in a place that you're not wanted because you're going to collect a check? Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, the answer is, let me see what I'm worth somewhere else. Yeah. So he has time to find that out if, if, he's, if there's something out there for him, for another team to give him, and he can explore that. But he knows he has the nest egg sitting there with the Chicago Bulls in a city that he really enjoys being in. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he enjoys playing for the coach, like I said, but he does enjoy being in Chicago. And I will say he ha he does have to make a decision before Vooch decide before the Bulls decide an extension with Vooch. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they could still go into unrestricted free agency, mm -hmm. but he will need to make a decision before the extension deadline on Vooch, and also before free agency starts. Mm. So, um, he he actually may well need to make a decision before you know he knows what his options are. Obviously, you can start to sort of do some digging around what else is going on in the league. But I'm looking here at the veterans minimum salary for 2023-24 mm -hmm. for a 10-year veteran is $2.8 million. He's making like 3.3 with the Bulls. Right. So that's like half a million dollar pay cut if he just gets the minimum. Mm. But I think he's an above minimum player. So he could make some more money potentially. Um, but I mean, we'll see. It's, it's, it's certainly gonna be interesting for him and uh, yeah, I, I think um, I, th I think he may have some options, whether he makes as much money or longer term security, whatever you know, sort of appeals to him in terms of that was going to what are his priorities. That was going to be my next question. Like, how many how much options do you feel he kind of has? Because I do think there are GMs out there who aren't watching the games and might just look strictly at the numbers. Yeah, and say, oh man, you know, this was awesome. And I'm not saying Andre Drummer is terrible. He's a really solid player. Um, but you can't really know a guy until you just sit there and watch him. But not all GMs are going to do that. Some right. are just going to see that and be like, this could fit us. And right. might give him some money for that. So that, that could occur too. Uh, we got some breaking news uh, in the breaking NBA. News? Real, oh, real, real breaking news. Like real? Real, real, real breaking real? news. Yes. Um, right, hold on. Hold on. We will tell you myself. what that is and then take an ad break and then come back and discuss it. Okay. All this right. is from Chris Haynes of Shout Yahoo out. Sports. Uh, TNT Bleacher Report. Phoenix Suns have notified Chris Paul that he will be waived, making the future Hall of Famer one of the top free agents this offseason. Speaking of free agents, league sources tell NBA on TNT and Bleacher Report. So there's that. Oh, wow. Man. 
Okay, let's take a break. Wow. We'll come back. We'll, we'll dive into that. into that. Okay. As well as some maybe other free agent options that the Bulls can actually sign. Okay. Um, while we're doing that, do us a favor. Hit that thumbs up button if you're watching along on YouTube. Helps us out a lot. We greatly appreciate it. And, of course, make sure you hit that subscribe button, too, if you aren't subscribed to the CHGO Sports YouTube channel already. Mm-hmm. Big Dave. I have my own uh, breaking news. Lady Wonder is outside, ladies and gentlemen. Lady Wonder has made an appearance. Oh, there she is. There she is. Feet up with the wonderful dog with her, too. Oh, Look is at that a dog. Black Lab puppy? Dude, flex. Oh, my God. She is awesome. All right. I feel Come less on, shirtless okay wonder. spying on a random woman on a balcony across the alley as uh-huh. opposed to the shirtless wonder who is a man. How is it spying? I'm not, I'm not spying on her. Like, I'm literally looking You're, across the street and I see her. You are staring at someone from across a street mm-hmm. who doesn't know that they are staring at you. If that's not spying, I don't know what yeah, it is. Yeah, I'm not staring. <laughs> like, we can remove that right there. But I see her. There's a glance. Pointed her out, and then I say hello, and I come back to you all, and I look at Steven, and I say, Steven, what time is it? Game time. Who? Uh huh. And that's how you do it. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful, ladies and gentlemen. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater nearest you. Killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee. So you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped. For the fun that you're about to have. Man, what's awesome about game time? I'm so glad you asked. Thank you very much. Flash deals. Last minute tickets, y'all. Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. My personal favorite, the images of the seat views. Got to know where the leg room is. The lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, and they even got job loss protection they are looking out for you and yours so snag the tickets without the stress with game time download the game time app create an account use the code chgo for twenty dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem that code chgo get yourself twenty dollars off download the game time app today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed because we'll go golly what time is it it is I still can't believe the Suns waved Chris Paul slash game time hoot. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm distracted. I'm distracted. I'm, Willie Gogali I'm is still distracted. utterly shocked. He is shocked. I'm shooketh. Shooketh. That's a lot of money, man. For an, well, we'll get into it later. We got commercials to read. Today's show also brought to you by our friends at ComEd. The ComEd Energy Efficiency Program is committed to helping families and businesses in the communities they serve helping manage energy usage and lower energy bills now and into the future. Comet offers a wide variety of incentives on lighting and other efficiency upgrades to commercial, industrial, and public sector customers of all sizes across their territory. Comet also offers free facility assessments that can help find energy-saving opportunities like for HVAC systems, commercial kitchen equipment, and industrial processes. Now, Stephen, you're probably thinking to yourself right now, how... Does all of this work? It sounds too good to be true. Is that correct? That was exactly what I was thinking. It's so weird that you asked me. (laughs) I got you covered, Stephen. I'm always one step ahead when it comes to making sure you know what's going on. I'm here for you. An authorized engineer will work with you to develop a detailed assessment plan specific to your goals and needs. These can be done in person or virtually and last approximately two hours. Then within three to four weeks, customers will receive a report detailing energy efficiency projects they can start working on right away. Each recommendation will include estimated savings, cost savings, project costs, potential incentives, and simple payback plans. If you own a business, one, congratulations, good for you. Two, don't wait. Get started saving money and energy today for energy saving tips, lighting incentives, or to schedule your free facility assessment. Go to comed.com slash powering biz. Do you need that website one more time, Stephen? Please spell it for me, too. I will be happy to. Comed.com slash powering P O W E R I N G biz. That's B I Z biz. Mm. Schedule your appointment today. Mm. Uh, all right, guys. So before we dive into some potential Bulls uh, three point shooting free agent targets that they can sign for $12, um, Chris Paul waived by the Phoenix Suns. I was listening to the Instant reaction pod from Zach Lowe and Brian Windhorst after game two from the floor of Ball Arena. And Wendy dropped a little bit of a hint that this might happen when they were talking about other things around the league. 
uh, the Suns and their turnover as far as uh, their hiring of a new coach. Mm -hmm. And people were wondering, is, you know, is it time that they move on from Chris Paul? This is yet again a season in which Chris Paul's team, playoff bound, high expectations. Mm -hmm. The Suns mortgage a lot to go get Kevin Durant, disgruntled star who wanted out of Brooklyn. They get Kevin Durant. They've got Devin Booker, incredible young star. They've got Aiden. Chris Paul, hurt, not there when they needed him mm-hmm. going playoff time. Mm-hmm. It's a, a, a tale as old as time. <laughs> Shout out to Bell and that whole Beauty and the Beast gang. <laughs> tale as old as time. Chris you Paul, did, Steven. <laughs> not available for the playoffs. Mm-hmm. But let's go get him, right? Let's find a way. Yeah, he's, he's going to L.A. Uh, that's just how I feel. It's honestly... People are shocked. People are surprised. You see, Will was completely thrown off by this. It, it's those things that don't compute, which is, again, why I love the NBA, because when logic isn't always the case. Some, you know, you got to plan for the unplanned sometimes when it comes to the NBA. But, yeah, I, I can, I'm not really surprised. It, it sounds like a logical move to me. Um, I'm like you just for the reason you stated, like injured, not there when it counts, pushing 40. Contract is woo, <laughs> you know. Like but so, here's so the deal with the contract. It kind of makes me feel like this is a good decision on on their end. Like I can, I could get it, and I kind of can look at it, understand it, and maybe his um, what he does doesn't vibe with Frank Vogel too. Like maybe it doesn't work that way as well, and they feel like they just want to move forward with Devin Booker, with Kevin Durant, and with Aiton, and just build around that kind of big three. So here's the deal though with the contract. He's still, so he's making $30.8 million this year. He's set to. They waive him, and he's only guaranteed 15.8. So they still have to pay him $15.8 million to not play for their team next year. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm seeing here from uh, Yossi Yossi Golzan, he he writes for Hoops Hype, um, that Phoenix can waive and stretch that amount. So Mm -hmm. it'll only be like $3 million over the next five years. But they're still over the tax. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, they'll, they'll, again, be able to use the taxpayer mid-level exception, which is half of the non-taxpayer, uh, what the Bulls have, so about $6 million, mm. to go sign somebody. But now they're out of starting point guard. They still are over the tax where they can't really do much in order to add. It seems to me it, like it's kind of a, a tax-saving move more than anything else. Yeah, maybe, they f- maybe they feel like because he's not available in the playoffs to them that it's not worth the money. But, like, yeah. what are the alternatives? The other thing this tells me is, they probably sniffed around for trades and nobody was interested in, mm. that, in that price. Mm. Um, otherwise, you're not taking a $16 million hit. So it's pretty interesting. I wonder where he signs. Probably LA. looking at one of the LA teams. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's shocking to me. I mean, that, the, the banana boat crew <laughs> is still un, incomplete as far as all of them getting to play with each other at some point. It's true. He's the final piece. Uh, LeBron never. Did LeBron never played with Melo, did he? Yeah, he did. Melo played yeah, with the Lakers. Played for the oh, Lakers. my God, you're right. He did. Mm-hmm. That is wild. Yeah, yeah but he, so. had, he made LeBron <laughs> say, beg me. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, say please. Wow, I totally forgot that happened. <laughs> but, yeah, he's the only one. So, it, for me, it makes sense that he goes to L.A. Uh, yeah. Um, our guy Hayes from Chicago Bulls Central. What's up, buddy? What Saying, up, Hayes? Uh, that's a type of move Jerry would never let the Bulls do. <laughs> Drew's... M- Pointing out that Kobe White's mentor is Chris Paul. It is. Dot, 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 just saying. Uh, and think, Patrick Williams, they tied too. Chris Paul has a lot of mentees, I'm guessing. True. Um, He's close with Kobe, I, Those kids aren't going to learn how to play dirty and flop by themselves. <laughs> Chris Paul's got a lot of kids to mentor, okay? Yeah. Now, I, we had a show about this mm-hmm. a while ago, mm-hmm. about Chris Paul being here. I don't think you were here for that. <laughs> and that was pretty much the reaction of, of it all, Chris Paul. He did, he did that twice. Get out of um, here. So I'm going to ask you, <laughs> since you weren't here, Chris Paul on the boat, does that work for you? Is that something you could be, get behind? It depends on a lot of different factors. Okay. The first <clears throat> I think you have to ask yourself is just like how much. Sure. I don't think the Bulls are going to be able to, as we've talked about with their cap sheet, like they're not going to be able to outbid anyone. Um, he's not signed for the minimum. Mm. And if he is signing for the minimum, he'd probably want to go somewhere where he could compete. If... Somehow, like, DeMar wasn't on the team. I think it would make more sense just because how many of these, like, mid-range only ball-dominant guys can you have on the floor at one time? Mm. Like, we talk about it all the time. The Bulls need shooting. They need – and I think that's a much greater need than 
facilitation. Yeah. I think point guard, uh, backup point guard, whatever it is, like that has been a talking point because of how much the Bulls have missed Lonzo, and I yeah. think that's important. Correct. But I think the reason they missed Lonzo is more for his shooting and his transition play and his defense than his ability to like organize an offense because at the end of the day, the ball was in DeMar's hands anyway. So mm-hmm. I think if you like insert him into the Bulls lineup instead of DeMar, maybe that makes more sense. But obviously like you would have need to have traded DeMar for him in order mm-hmm. for that to work. And now mm-hmm. he's a free agent. So that I just don't think that's going to happen. I, I don't see how the Bulls would get him. Um, and it seems like it would just be sort of, I mean, he's much better than Patrick Beverly, but it seems like it would be sort of in that same vein of like, we're, our ship is sinking. Let's do whatever we can to try to like tread water for one more year mm-hmm. before this thing totally goes down. Wow. I love how you beat a depressing picture. But I do We're think I do man. think he I do think he would be he would help guys like Zach, like yeah. Kobe, mm-hmm. um, even Vooch just like get organized, have sort of a more cohesive half court offense. I just think the fit with Damar and him would be pretty clunky. And let's not forget the the year he spent with the Billy Donovan as well. Yeah. Like they have, you know, a rapport and, and a kinship also together because they play really well. Remember that team? A, a was Thunder team to to the that playoffs. everyone thought was going to be trash. Yeah. They weren't, well, it was a 0.7 mm-hmm. like, percent chance of going. They were a six seed or something a little higher than that. But yeah, they have, they have a, a time. And Billy Donovan, whatever he does offensively, nothing works without a point guard. He has to have a point guard for a Billy Donovan offense to work. That's just what it is. So whatever has to happen or has to occur, Bull's going to have to have a point guard, man, that can run a Billy Donovan offense, bro, because that's the only way it's going to work. We saw what it looks like without one. It don't work. It's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I, I do also think that this is clearly just paving the way for him to go team up with LeBron. Oh, I completely agree. And the Lakers. Complete. Oh, my this God. This is the. Charlotte's one is outside the same time as Lady One. It blew my mind. Oh, my God. Let it happen. Like, Let love happen. <laughs> Let love happen. He's, oh, the Charlotte's one. She's going to smell the heater. And that he's putting out right there. He's going to look up and ask for Dave's one. Dave's going to go home and start writing the script for a Hallmark <laughs> a Hallmark <laughs> TV movie about these two poor people Stank. across the alley who get spied on all the time. Rachel Lee Cook. <laughs> I, think, I think we need to try and get Jason Statham for Jason the shirtless Statham. wonder. <laughs> they, they have a similar look to them. He does have a Jay Statham to him, man. I don't know if Statham would do a Hallmark, I mean, man. Bald white guy with a beard. Uh huh. Just chain smoking cigs <laughs> over there. <laughs> Dude, this is a thing. Oh my God, this is everything I wanted it to be so much. What a day has occurred. I, I wish someday we could just take one of the cameras and just point it out our balcony yeah. glass door. And show people what's really going on. So y'all on. could see yeah. the magic that <laughs> has Dave freaking out all the time. <laughs> Love, baby. Um, let's, uh, Let's talk about some of these names that were on our pal Ricky O'Donnell's free agent list sure. now that we've covered the breaking Chris Paul news. Good luck to you wherever you end up. It better not be here or I will walk <laughs> into Lake Michigan with weights on my ankles. One, one quick thing that I'm seeing on Twitter, uh, this is from Eric Pincus. If the Suns stretch him, they cannot re-sign him this summer. If they waive him without stretch, they can re-sign him though and they won't have the rights. Can be at the minimum if that was something both sides wanted. So, so they could... Wave him and then bring him back on a more on a team cap friendly contract. Okay. And and Chris Haynes is saying that he'll he wants to play several more years and will look to join a contender. Maybe this is a mechanism for the Suns to try to get him back I mean, cheaper, but look to join a contender. Were they not a team that was two wins away from the conference finals? Like <laughs> right there. <laughs> if that's right not there. a contender, what's yeah. a contender? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Very solid point, sir. I mean, I guess the Spurs Lakers did make it. Wemby. The, Ooh. Oh, they do. God. He's That'd right. Fun. He's right. Would he even work that's, in San Antonio, though? He would work. He would work there. He's going it. to L.A. Let's just. Yeah. He's going to the Lakers, though. Like, he's always wanted to go. I think he'll, he'll either come back to the Suns on a more team-friendly deal or he goes to the Lakers. I do not see any other option being – Anywhere yeah. remotely realistic. Yeah, I can see him taking some time, you know what I mean, Get, getting to a new team, too. You know, again, he's 38. Yeah. You know, he's an older guy. He might want to take some time, uh, yeah. like half of the season, and come back in the second half of the season, sign with someone, and then just go for the goal. So yeah. that's also an option for him. Um, okay, let's, let's talk three-point shooting. Sure. Um, in his list of top 75, 
Ricky O'Donnell did even sort of cherry pick out of that list players who are average or above average three point shooters. Mm -hmm. It's like he made this list for the Bulls. Not, not, not that Ricky would do that. He loves the Bulls just like we do. Um, so I'm going to just rattle off some names. Some of these people are stretch fives who can mm -hmm. shoot, mm -hmm. and some of them are wings, some of them are guards. Okay. If I say a name that piques your curiosity, mm -hmm. say so. Christian Wood. Matt Thomas? No. Gary Trent Jr. Mm -hmm. Nas Reed. Georgie Wait, Niang. Stop. Go back. Gary Trent Jr. Gary Trent Jr. Yeah. To me, not, not gettable for the Bulls. I agree, but – he definitely peaks my shot. Thirty-seven percent from three on eleven and a half attempts per one hundred possessions this season. Mm -hmm. Lit up the Bulls a couple of times over the last Often. few years. Often, Bulls yeah. killer, all, all all Bulls killer team for sure. Oh yes. Um, yes. I feel yes. like he's gonna he's gonna have a, a decent market this summer. I agree. I mean, for those numbers you see right there, and the age that he is as well, a versatile guy. You know, on both ends of the floor, he's solid. Um, yeah, like he's, he's going to have guys looking at him. And Toronto has just got a team full of Gary Trent Juniors. They really do. He's Some got a player option with the Raptors. Most expect him to turn it down because he's going to get paid. He's going to get paid. At the same time, though, I mean, and Ricky lays this out, the teams with cap space, Rockets, Spurs, Jazz, Thunder, Hornets, Pistons, Pacers, Magic. He's got $20 Ooh, million dollars on the books. I'm not sure any of those teams are going to be like – Chomping at the bit to give him more point. than that. Yeah. So I actually could see him picking up his option. Um, maybe he looks for something that's a little bit cheaper, but long, longer term security. He is only like 24, 25. So I, I really do like Trent. He gets a ton of steals. Um, who knows if that was just a product of the way that the Raptors played defense, but mm -hmm. can really shoot the ball and obviously would help the Bulls a lot. But I agree that he's just going to be out of their price range if a trade is off the table. Yeah. Uh, somebody who just in the comments said, give me Yuta. Uh, Druish said, give me Yuta yes. Wantanabe. Give me Yuta. Um, oh, here comes Gottlieb's guy. Brooklyn Nets uh, shot 44.5% from three on 7.1 attempts per 100 possessions this season. Is that a gettable name? I think it's one of the more gettable names on this list. Yep. You see, he has, uh, Ricky has Yuta ranked 50 of right. the top 75 free agents. He's gettable for sure. Uh, he's definitely a gettable guy. It worked his way into being that kind of a three-point shooter. I mean, I, I credit Kevin Durant with some of that as well. He, he took a liking to that young man while, while he was there, uh, turned him into a serviceable basketball player, man. But 44% is nothing to sneeze at at all, man. And his length also uh, is also something that excites you uh, mm -hmm. about his talent. And also a young guy uh, as well. So he has those things going for him. And I don't think he's going to be costing you that much or it's going to be a lot of teams clamoring for him uh, either. Yeah, he's big. He's 6'9". Uh, shot the ball at, like, one of the best clips in the league, 44% on, I mean, low volume, but relative to the amount that he played, yeah. mm -hmm. not all that bad. Um, and he generates some steals and blocks, too, which yeah. which is a good indicator that he's playing uh, at least team defense. So I really like Yuda. I think he's got great size for his position. The Bulls need size. They need shooting. Um, and he's still relatively young. He's only 25, 26 years old. So, um Oh, no, I'm wrong. Uh, he'll be 28, age, right? Age 29 season next yeah, year. Yeah. So, um, Does it concern still, you a little bit uh, that he's reaching his peak as far as his shooting now and it might kind of fall off? Decline a little yeah. bit. Yeah, he has been a little bit up and down. Um, his first real season in the league, uh, well, I guess he played 15 games his rookie year, shot 37, uh, 12%. So, well, obviously, yeah. just like not, not enough of a sample Correct. there. Um, only 15 games. Got that back up to 37 his second year, also with Memphis, and also really small volume. But then once he got to Toronto, it was 40, 34, and then last year, 44. So it is a little bit up and down, but I think, you know, you look at his career average, 39, oftentimes you're, you're like, the average is in the middle, right? So it's, it's going to be sort of an evened out number, but the swings do maybe concern you a little bit, but for somebody to be able to make 44% on threes over the course of a year, like that told me they're a good shooter. Mm. And even if the numbers dip a little bit below that, they're still going to be stretching out the defense and changing sort of the way that defenses guard you. So he's definitely a guy that would be high on my list. And I think he's one of the more financially achievable mm. ones. Mm. Uh, speaking of financially achievable ones, Damian Lee. Mm. Does that name do anything for you? Uh, many years with the Golden State Warriors after his rookie year spent with the Atlanta Hawks. This season he spent with, speaking of the Phoenix Suns, 
74 games uh, for the Suns this season for Damian Lee, uh, all but five of which he came off the bench. Shot 3.3 three-point attempts per game and knocked him down at 44.5%. Yeah. I don't hate that. Number 66 <laughs> on Ricky O'Donnell's top 75 free agent uh-huh. rankings for this summer. And he was clutch in, in, a, in a few of those games this season as well uh, and took over. Had a uh, game winner against sure the Bulls. Did. Yes, he did. He absolutely did. Um, to go, I saw him take over games before this season as well. So that kind of uh, endears me to, you know, taking a flyer on this guy. Um, uh, I, I just uh, yeah. like where he's going. You know what I mean? I just like where his up, upside is going. He doesn't seem like a guy who's on a decline. He just seems like a guy who's constantly adding to his game. Right. And as entering his age 30, 31 season, Will, a guy that you think could be gettable on a veteran minimum kind of deal? Yeah, I think so. I mean, a lot of these guys are going to – Everybody wants shooting, right? So a lot of these guys are going to have options of, you know, do they want to compete for a championship? Do they want um, to take a one-year bet-on-yourself deal where they can maybe get a little bit more playing time to then hopefully parlay that into a bigger deal next summer? Mm -hmm. Um, So it kind of depends on what they'd want. uh, But he's definitely one of the the sharpshooters out there Mm -hmm. and a really good guy. So, um, yeah, he'd, he'd also be high on my list. And one of the good guys, I like how you, that's a good point, too. Uh, one of the good guys. Jason there. in the comments say, saying it's going to be Max, isn't it? Are you referring to Max Struess? Because if so, there's no way in hell the Bulls can afford him this summer. Dude's going to get paid. Whether or not the Heat uh, have the complete the upset of upsets mm-hmm. in this crazy run and find a way to win the NBA Finals. Tell Steven even, that. If, even if they are the <laughs> runners up to Denver, Max Struess is going to get offers from. All over the place. Him and Gabe And honestly, what wouldn't surprise me is him staying in Miami because hashtag heat culture and all that bullshit. Whatever. I, I, all I know is the Bulls ain't getting him. Dang, I wish you had his hat because that joint would have went He is quiet. from here, but yeah, he's not going to take that big of a discount. No, he's going to take that money, as he should. Not. Who, who knows at another time in his chance. career that he can you know, get yeah. this kind of paper. So. He went to Stag High School. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Daniel Lewis played at DePaul. You know who else uh, went to Stag High School? Come on and flex on him. I did. Flex on him. I did. Flex on him, Steve. He's a little bit younger than me. Flex though. on him. Oh, flex off. Are you also from Hickory Hills? <laughs> I'm from Pale Sills, which is like walking distance. There you go. <laughs> That's a flex all 454 right there. Uh, okay, I'm going to throw a few more bottom of the barrel names at you guys. Okay. Tell me if any of these move you. He's still playing right now. Stretch big. Kevin Love? No. Troy Brown Jr., Bulls Hell legend. No. Hell no. Jalen Noel. Mm. <laughs> he's a backup guard for the Wolves. He's, backup he's guard for Minnesota. He, he can score it. He can score. No. Uh, speaking of Minnesota, Nikhil Alexander Walker. He kind of uh, came on late. Yeah. I, I think he'd probably. He's he's young enough where he'll probably get paid for upside a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, I but, agree with that. Uh, speaking of vet minimum kind of folks, Reggie Jackson. No. 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 And I love Reggie, but no. Here's one more, uh, and this one I am at least quasi interested in, and it is 75. Let me crack on this. Ricky's top 75. All right. Veteran journeyman Matt Thomas, Terrence Ross. Terrence Ross. Yes. I would not mind a Terrence Ross on this bull squad next season. I like Terrence Ross a lot. I think he can play. He fits And he certainly can shoot. Yeah, he checks a lot of the boxes. I I was really shocked that he didn't get the tick he was supposed to get when he went to Phoenix there. Mm -hmm. That was a little surprising. I think there's a reason he didn't get it. Talk that shit, Will. Talk it. What's the reason? Because he can't do it. He's not very good. He said he can't do it. I mean, I think he's a capable shooter, and that's really all the Bulls need. Uh, But he fell out of favor in Orlando and in Phoenix. I just... He's, he's a little bit older than you might think. He's going to be he's 30. He'll be 32 next season. I yeah. just don't I, – he's, he's a bottom-of-the-barrel guy. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's what that's I what said. That's what he said, right? <laughs> <laughs> he, he was a buyout guy, and that's, like, that's kind of how you have to look at it. I, yeah. I totally agree. Here's, here's another bottom-of-the-barrel guy sure. who I wouldn't mind. You guys are going to think I'm crazy, but Joe Ingles. Uh, One of the best three-point shooters in the league. Yeah. Was awesome for the Bucks when he played last year. Over 40% on threes. Awesome is strong. And I'll tell you this. He can also really organize an offense. So I think he can run some pick and roll with the second unit. Yeah. I think he can space the floor out. Yeah. Uh, run some secondary pick and roll next to DeMar Zach. He's old and he's not athletic and um, he's really old. But yeah. I think he, he <laughs> solves a couple of the Bulls' needs, and he's not going to cost you much. Here's the and thing. he's an agitator. <laughs> and he will talk a lot of shit. He is a goon, for sure. He signed a one-year deal with the Bucks 
after his whole like traded and waived situation mm-hmm. le- a year ago mm-hmm. while recovering from an injury, why do you think he signed in Milwaukee? Tell dude, me. dude wanted to be a part of a championship team. This is true. They also paid him probably more than anybody. They else paid him too. six and a half million but on dude, a one year deal while hurt. But tell me this, like, doesn't he feel like a Chicago Bulls player? Joe Ingles? Yes. Not really. Joe Ingles feels like a Bulls Not player, really, man. no. He really feels like one. Oh, nah, he's, he's like a... Crepit and if, ornery. If, if you're... If you <laughs> mean like, yeah, he's a... Grinder gears. A, a less in-shape Tony Kukoc or... Uh, no, I, I'm just know. talking about the agitator. You know, the goon guy. Sloney guy. Kukoc, if you You know, will. come on with this. <laughs> you know, taking his time. You know, just something, something fans will get behind. You know, that kind of player. When you see a Joe Ingles on the floor, just plodding up and down the floor, but talking all kinds of crap. Yeah. And diving on the floor, and but hitting threes at the same time. I can see I, he reminds me of a Chicago Bulls player. He's basically like Dragic, right? That's it, a tall I mean, Dragic. So Ingles has made some money in his NBA career, mm-hmm. not a ton. I'm looking at his uh, spot track uh, website right now. He made, you know, early career stuff, a few million here, four million there. He got a four-year, $52 million deal from Utah from 2017 to 2020. Mm. Then he signed a one-year for 13, uh, a one-year for eight, and then that one for six and a half with, with Milwaukee. So it's not like the man is destitute. Mm-hmm. He's made some money. Yes. I don't yeah. know if he's looking to get paid or looking to be on a championship contender. Yeah. Here's the thing. Talk to The me. Bulls can't offer either of those. Mm. Mm. Matt Peck, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. But I think... That's true for, I mean, that's true for any free agent. And guys have to go somewhere. Maybe they just end up bringing it back 1 through 15, which right. I think would make us all pull our hair out. But, <laughs> um, like, roster spots are going to fill up around the league. The Bulls are not going to be probably anybody's first option. The one thing they do have to offer is playing time. Mm-hmm. And, like I said, maybe somebody feels like they could parlay a minimum this year into a bigger deal over the next three years, mm-hmm. if they get some minutes and perform well with the Bulls. But I, I think the fact that they don't have a lot of money and the fact that they're not going to be competing at a legitimately high level mm-hmm. is going to make them – it's a it's a tough sell for yeah. free agents. No, I agree. Is. So that that is part of the confines that you're working with. Uh, could you – Steve, could you put up the one from uh, French Bulls TV because he's uh, bringing up two free agent shooters he'd like to submit right there, and I'd like to get Will's opinion on that. Uh, D'Angelo – Russell and Karis Levert. Um, I would not be surprised if the Bulls are interested in either of those guys, but I think they're just going to be way too expensive. Um, you know, both both like both guys are young. They've made a lot of money in their career. Um, I think they're both pretty flawed players. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, former teammates on the Nets, but I just think they're going to be out of the Bulls' price range. Mm. Yeah, D'Angelo definitely is going to go get a check. Yeah. yeah, that's true. He's not worried about winning right yeah. now, which is what is good for and the And it Bulls. seems yeah. like the Lakers, I mean, <laughs> who knows what the Lakers are going to do, but it does seem like they – He got won. a lot of scapegoat heat in the playoffs. Yeah. That, yeah. And getting yeah. swept by Denver in that series, Ooh. a lot of people were pointing their finger at D'Angelo Russell. Yeah. Rightfully so, though. Like, he wasn't great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, speaking of those NBA playoffs, we got to take our second break. We'll come back and uh, wrap up with just a few thoughts on game three. Nuggets heat on deck tonight. I'm sure Steven is a nervous wreck rooting for his boy, Jimmy Buckets. He's pumped. To go up 2-1. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you're watching along on YouTube while we take this break to tell you about our friends from... Well, you know what, Matt? Um, Ring ring text messages from baby Joey here. Oh, goodness gracious. A texting machine, that baby Joey. Yeah, man, he's always on the move, man. He's like Jay Glazer. He's just always texting. (laughs) Um, He's in Miami. Right now, that's where he's at. Not a bad place to be. I asked him, was it there for, for the finals, is, is what I asked him. Mm-hmm. And he said, no, he was there uh, closing a deal. And then he gave me a wink. Closing a deal? Yeah, he gave me a wink. In and then, Miami? And then sent me a soccer ball. So, obviously, he's closing the Messi deal. It's what he was out there doing is handling business right he's there. He's making sure Messi comes yeah. to the Miami MLS team. Yeah, and then I asked okay. him, well, I heard the rumor that he turned down $1.6 billion. Did you hear this? This is true. He turned down $1.6 billion uh, from a, a Saudi team. He mm-hmm. turned that down. Three years. I believe it was three years, $1.6 billion. Saudis are buying everything, man. Insane. <laughs> he turned that down. And then uh, Baby Joey just said, 
He just sent me a, a gift with the guy pointing to his head like this, man. I was just like, okay, all right. He has no questions. This is Baby Joey do, man. He does things like this, man. He, he sets up deals. That's what he does. But one thing he doesn't do is understand. Never. He don't get it. He don't understand. <laughs> he don't understand. Why? It got to cost so much money to put on them premium polarized shades up on your face. Why? <laughs> why? But why, man? He don't get it. If he don't get it, then why should we? And he is right to not understand why you have to pay so much money to look so amazing. If you want to look like Will the Go Gottlieb, why it got to cost you so much money? It don't. Guess who says that? Shady Rays, ladies and gentlemen. Shady Rays, the independent sunglasses company. They offer you that world-class product. It's just as good as any expensive pair that you have ever put on your beautiful face. Those durable frames, those extremely clear optics, those premium polarized shades at an affordable price for your outdoor and indoor adventiones. It's not a word. But also... But also, ladies and gents, the Matt Peck lost and broken replaces playing. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Let's say your glasses are on that at right there. That one was also for Chris Paul. Yeah. Fuck out of here. A two for one right there for Matt Peck. Let's say those glasses are on that hat right there that Matt just violently threw. <laughs> oh, no. They are broken. He is upset. Shady Ray says, send them back to us. We will send you brand new pair. Right on your face. No cost to you. But also, let's say you saw Will to go Gottlieb on the beach playing volleyball like he was in Top Gun doing the Maverick things like he does. Looking cool with the glasses on. And you said, I want to look that cool. I'm going to go get those glasses. And then you get home and realize, mm-mm, you ain't, got, you ain't no cough guy. You found out quickly. But now you can send those glasses right back and get the pair that fits you. As long as you do it within 30 days, guess what? They will send you that for free, y'all. No risk with your shop, and their team always has your back. So, exclusively for the listeners out there, Shady Rays giving away their best sale of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com, use the code CHGO for 50% off of two plus pairs of premium polarized shades. So try it for yourself! The shades that are rated five stars by over 250 thousand people y'all because it's shady rays what a rays ladies and gentlemen are oh so shady be safe baby joy <laughs> oh my god this man is a terrorist <laughs> <laughs> this man is a goddamn ad reading terrorist i have no idea what that means but i guess it's a compliment <laughs> <laughs> today's show is also brought to you by our friends at goose island beer company mm-hmm. chicago's beer since 1988 they've got a full long Beautiful beer roster. It's a much more expansive and beautiful roster than the current Bulls roster. But, you know, it is what it is. You got the Goose IPA, the six-time medal winner at Great American Beer Fest, always in style with its citrus aroma and bold hoppy finish. Plus the new line of Beer Hug IPAs, the Tropical IPA, the Hazy IPA. Try, try them all. Pick your favorite. The 312 Wheat Ale, a popular one here amongst us Chicagoans in the summertime. And speaking of crisp, delicious summertime beers, this Pocket Pilsner. Oh! Fantastic for drinking on a summer day. I'm saying. In Chicago. Easy. It's what the brewers are drinking, y'all. So grab an ultra fresh brewery exclusive beer at Goose Island's original brew house on Clybourne Avenue in Lincoln Park or in their tap room on Fulton Street right here in West Town. Goose Island Beer Company, Chicago's Beer. Mm. Honk. Honk. Honk, honk, honk. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, all right, guys. With a uh, few minutes we got left in today's show, just wanted to get y'all's thoughts on game three tonight. Mm. Uh, tip off 7.30 Chicago time. Just two and a half hours and change. Tie 1-1. One, one. Um, to me, this is all about whether or not the Nuggets actually decide that they feel like playing some defense tonight. <laughs> and if they do, I feel like they will roll. That was my biggest takeaway from them losing game two. Yeah. Uh, in particular, Michael Porter Jr., who has also not knocked down a lot of shots in the first two games of this series. Of 17 in two games. Michael Porter Jr. Mm. and collectively that Nuggets defense. Mm-hmm. Credit to the Heat for knocking down all these threes, but they are getting open looks. Yeah. And credit to them for getting open looks, but I'm also faulting the Nuggets who played piss poor defense in game two. That's my take. What about y'all? <laughs> um. Yes, they, they didn't play great defense, uh, but I don't want to take too much away from uh, Miami because they made some really excellent adjustments. We, Will and I talked about them 
uh, on the show on, on Monday, but they really did a good job putting Kevin Love in the starting lineup so Cody Zeller never has to see the floor again. It's, it's a great adjustment. 6.10 rebounds is what he walked away with in 22 minutes. Um, and he was getting DNPs. Like, yeah, it's wild. Dude, seriously. Like, they do that. Like, he, Duncan Robinson, my guy, he was a DNP all season. And then comes in when Jimmy, Jimmy Neutron on him, you know, in the fourth quarter. So, 10 points all in the fourth quarter. So, yeah, they did a good job. I love the way they, they used Bam. Uh, I thought that was the best way to use him, just as a facilitator and not so much as a scorer. So, he did a solid job of that. Um, when his jumper is falling, he's a different kind of ball player. And his jumper was falling early for Bam. So, that's how you kind of match Jokic because there's no way you can, you know, really do anything with that. Mm -hmm. But that's the only way you can really kind of match him, man, is playing your best game. He really played his best game. But, yeah, Matt, <laughs> yeah, I kind of agree with you. Because Denver, I, I, all that said, it was a three-point game. And Jamal Murray just missed the shot. It was an excellent look, but he missed the shot. So if Denver, if Michael Porter Jr. does what Michael Porter Jr. is supposed to do, and their bench does what they're supposed to do, and, and Aaron Gordon gets out of the slump because they did a good job on him taking away what he likes to do, getting that deep seal mm -hmm. on those guys. They kind of took that away. He got a lot of easy buckets in game one. Super easy. He set the whole tone early on. When they took that away from him. So, if he gets it together, Michael Porter Jr. gets his thing together. Yeah, they should win game three, but I'm not going to put it past the Heat, man. They made great, great adjustments in game two. Yeah, and I, th I think that they are just – they're playing mistake-free. They're playing yeah. – Yeah. I don't want to say, like, above their heads because, obviously, like, they're, they're at a talent deficit, but – they are executing at such a high level as a group. Mm -hmm. Their defensive scheme has been, like, outrageously good. Um, they're putting pressure on all the right places. They're throwing curveballs when they need to. And, again, it's still been really close. I mean, yeah. the, the Nuggets had a chance to tie it. But if you give the Heat any sort of breathing room, yeah. they will make you pay. That's true. It's not a matter of, like, can they get hot? It's like... If you leave them, they're going to make their shots. And <laughs> mm -hmm. I think, you know, we've seen it time and time again in this playoffs. Miami is just not going anywhere. So I, I do think it'll be close. I think that the Nuggets will um, tighten things up a little bit, and I think that'll probably be enough to get at least one, if not both of these games in Miami. Okay. Just because of that talent deficit, um, I just think the Nuggets are really, really good. But they need to be – more cohesive. They need to yeah. tighten up their defense a lot, mm -hmm. and um, they can't give the Heat any room. Like there, there's just, yeah. I, I think we all kind of came into this series, and when I say we all, I mean everybody who watches basketball kind of assumed that the Nuggets would roll, right? Because they are just a way more talented group. But um, yeah, I just I don't I don't think that. Like, I was listening to Zach Lowe and Tim Legler the other day, mm. and basically what they said was, like, Miami has proven that they can absolutely win this series, and I think that's true. Mm. So I, I think Nuggets are going to, but they can't play with their food at all. No, no. They, gotta yeah. they kill, need to they execute. Kill it, the, uh, and that's the other thing that I think uh, Miami always has done well throughout this playoff run, and credit to them for doing so, is uh, I think one of the greatest strengths of the Denver offense, which – in either of the first two games did not look like they were at their peak. They were not like the, oh my I God, agree. unstoppable Nuggets offense Agreed. because the Heat are so well-coached yeah. and disciplined yes. in transition. Yeah. And the thing that the Nuggets do, in addition to Jokic picking people apart in the half court and Jamal Murray picking people apart in the half court, is they get the ball up the floor so damn quickly. Yeah, right. And it, it's because the Nuggets as a roster are built in s such that anyone can bring the ball up. Yeah. Any of their guys, their wings, their big guys, anyone who either gets the defensive board or is pulling the ball out of the basket can bring the ball up. They're also brilliant with their outlet passes. True. And most teams in the NBA, if you catch them dozing for half a second, boom, toast, easy bucket. You can't do that nearly as easily against this Heat team that's so disciplined in transition. And then you watch Miami taking advantage of the Nuggets' lackadaisical transition defense going the other way, and you're like, well, okay. That certainly narrows the gap, yeah. the talent gap between these two teams. Agree. And I, and I thought Miami's transition defense was also way better than it was in game one. Mm -hmm. They kept getting back on defense very well. And I thought Denver's has been good the entire series, actually. But I just thought Miami improved theirs. But, yeah, man, like, honestly – 
it can go either way tonight, honestly. I, I can see a way where the Heat walk away with a victory. I can obviously see a way where the Nuggets walk away with a victory, man. It's about what team is going to remain disciplined and what stars are going to shine. They did a great job putting Jimmy Butler on Murray mm-hmm. in game two. Yeah. He started the game with that. I thought that was an excellent decision. So when you're running that pick and roll that they like to run, <clears throat> it, it, it changes things. You know what I'm saying? Just having him there already. So that worked for him. Let's see how they adjust to that. Mike Malone said he put out, uh, what was it, 20, so the team 23 plays, what he called discipline plays, mm-hmm. where guys, you know, just weren't on their thing. And so he showed that to the team. So, yeah, it's a chess match, man. This is why you love the finals right here. Like, two good coaches, two good teams going at it. And let's see what it looks like tonight. And like I said, I think the Heat are just – their, their superpower is that they're going to out-execute you. Yes. That's their competitive advantage. Yes. So it's, for the Nuggets, can you, can you beat them d- in spite of that? Yes. Um, and they certainly have the talent to do so, but there's, uh, they played two games. It's obviously best of five series now, mm-hmm. and like the Heat are just going to keep cranking up the variance, shooting a ton of threes. Ton. If they're going to make them, it's, I mean, like Stefano did this thing a couple days ago about, looking at, like, which playoff teams are winning these games. And it's, like, basically whoever hits the most threes. Right. <laughs> and Miami shot damn near 50% yes, in game two. they did. 48. And they're shooting more of them. So yep. And shooting more. They can keep doing that. I don't believe they're going to do it tonight. But see, but two things. I can't, I can't believe it. Two things. One, Miami's been doing it all playoffs. That's the way they've been shooting their threes, man. Honestly, all playoffs. That's how it's been. So it's not really surprising. But logic tells you that this should not continue. But also, I think part of that regression to the mean, which you're talking about, is that they shot so poorly during the regular season. Yes. All these guys were Correct. below their averages. So yeah. right. it does even out. And who knows how long knows. that'll last. Yeah. But I, we but, don't know. But at this point, if you're all the way to the final, maybe if you're in round one as a coach, as a coaching staff, and as a unit coming in with your game plan, you look at, okay, well, we'll give them these open shots mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because they didn't make them all season long. At this point, if you're Mike Malone in the Nuggets staff, you're like, well, apparently all of a sudden the Heat are the best three-point shooting team in the league. In the world. So you got a game plan for that. <laughs> you have and to. That, and the Nuggets were the movement, lazy closing out on shooters in game two. And with the movement that they have, you know, they're getting a ton of back cuts too and mm-hmm. easy shots at the rim mm-hmm. because of the amount of pressure. It's like the Warriors almost where like yeah. guys are, you're sending two with Duncan Robinson yeah. coming over a pin down because you're so afraid of him hitting a three that you're leaving somebody else cutting to the basket wide open. Yeah. And Bam is such a good facilitator that he'll find you. So, Very much so. Um, yeah, you, you can't leave guys just because like the math suggests that they're probably going to start missing shots at yeah. some point. Mm-hmm. You have to defend them. Two. I mean, it's game, game three of the finals. Like yeah. you, you cannot... There's no room for error. I'm like, let Bam beat me is all I'm saying. Let him go beat me, and that's fine. I can deal with it. Let, let them have their twos. You can't give up those threes, man. That's too easy. The other thing, Denver hasn't played the Denver game yet. No. I've seen Miami have the Miami game. We mm-hmm. saw it in game two. Denver hasn't had the Denver Nugget no. game yet. I'm still waiting on that. We'll see if it happens. They, they won fairly comfortably in game one without playing their best. Right. And then they certainly did not play, play their, their best. best in game two. They had a shot. Um, I want to see that Denver game. Tonight, yeah, and I think we, I think there's a good chance we will. We'll see. Uh, who wins tonight? Real quick, Nuggets Heat. <laughs> Steven, who wins tonight? <laughs> I'm taking the Heat tonight, which you could have guessed, but I think uh, these next two games will be split, and it's going back to Denver tied. Yeah, two-two. I kind of think the Heat are winning tonight. Think so? I think so. My gut says the Heat. Will? <sighs> I don't know, man. I'll, I'll go Heat too. I'll go Heat too. You go heat too? Yeah. And go heat. All right. Nugs coming back to Denver up 3 1. <laughs> Nugs tonight. <laughs> Nugs Friday. Let's go. He's like Nugs forever. Nugs forever. <laughs> the heat can go to hell. Uh, that's it. We're out of that's time where for heat today. Is. <laughs> Thank you to Lawrence and Steven for rocking the producer's chair. Much love and appreciation as always. Uh, until tomorrow when we'll be back in studio, you can uh, follow Will on Twitter, uh, Will underscore Golly. Big He's Dave is at Bow. Bow. BWL Sports. He's less of an adult. Uh, I'm Bulls underscore Peg. Be- Still grown. <laughs> Still grown. We are CHO <laughs> underscore Bulls. Tomorrow, 4 p.m. in studio, Chicago time. We will see you then. Enjoy game three tonight. Mm-hmm. We'll touch on it on tomorrow's show, among some other Bulls topics. Until then, hit that thumbs up. See you, Red. Be good.